Chapter 4, Ice Cap Blyville's town hall stood proudly in the center of town, being the only other location besides the library to have color in an otherwise white world that Blyville had wound up in. It wasn't just the town hall that had color, though. The restoration caused by Sonic and Francis trip to Metropolis Zone had spread the color as far as the two bridges over the stream that housed by us to town hall, the water below them once again flowing. Inside the mayor's office, Twilight took a deep breath as he finished explaining the situation to the mayor. The mayor spoke slowly. Let me make sure I completely understand what you just told me, Twilight Sparker. Because of this mysterious creature that you saw, Bullyfield has been stripped of its color in this mysterious world and every pony in it has been stopped. Yet there seems to be a way to restore it to normal. Thanks to that creature appearing in their world as well. She gestured over at Sonic, Tails, and Amy at the last part. Blue Hedgehog leaning against the bookcase with his arms crossed, while Amy stood a short distance away, looking at him dreamily. Tails, meanwhile, was a little bit about as annoyed as I was that Amy is getting flanderized. AGAIN! Was sitting on top of a toolbox in a corner near the double doors, working on something. Amy Dash was standing near Twilight's side, looking between everyone in the room, and occasionally throwing her two bits to make her look better. And Spike was sitting on the floor from Sonic. He paid attention to the entire story. And now was giving the hedgehog a slightly harder look he didn't notice. Wondering why he couldn't get Rarity to fawn over him like that. Spike, you don't want that. D do you really want Rarity to be a soulless, lifeless, bland character? I mean, I know Mike does, but... Twilight nodded. That's correct, Mayor. For some reason, the portals that are connected to Sonic's world are able to restore Ponyville when we go through them. I don't understand why, but I suppose we have bigger things to worry about right now. The mayor said, Oh, I agree. That's truly the case, and we must restore Ponyville as soon as possible. Rainbow Dad spoke up. No worries there, Mayor. We just find all our missing friends and bring the life back to Ponyville. They'll sweat. Twice said, I don't know if it's going to be that easy, Dad. Spike finally tore his gaze away from Sonic and looked over at Twilight, asking, Well, why wouldn't it be, Twilight? For the sounds of things, Sonic's been to these places before, so he knows how to get around. Plus, he's got some help in the form of you two and uh, Tails over there. Getting through those locations and finding our friends would be easy. Rambo dashed to Twilight and the sign and said, He's right, Twilight. What makes you think it will be easy to find our friends? Twilight replied, It's not so much finding our friends that I'm worried about. It's finding these portals in the first place. We've had a little bit of luck on our side so far, but now that Ponyville's reappearing, it's not going to be easy to find them. Sonic spoke. So he's got a point, you know. I mean, considering the circumstances, I was fortunate enough to wake up near the library where the first portal was. And after that, we came here to talk to the mayor and ended up finding that portal we just went through. After gesturing towards the pulsing horn with the storm, he went on, It's things like that could show up anywhere and say any building in town. They're still telling where the next one could be. Okay, I'm taking over for for Sonic. I mean, the easy thing would be for me to do would be just investigate every single one in the next few seconds. Well, that would be kind of impossible. <laughs> Done! Twenty nine. not. Exactly. If we had to track these portals down like this, it's going to be like searching that city all over again. Barging to other ponies' houses, searching through everything inside, double or triple checking every place we've been after we've been through a portal to see if anything's changed. Nothing else is going to take a lot of time to find them. Assuming there is time in this world, that is. And you said, That's not going to be a problem for Sonic. He's so fast and determined. You can find all these portals that are appearing and get your town back to normal now time. Then we can go on a date, just the two of us. I am getting annoyed by being flanderized. Sonic slipped on that right. Twilight, Rainbow Dash, the mayor, Spike looked at the pink hedgehog with raised eyebrows. Some of them finding it hard to believe that she was foreign because they at a time like this. <laughs> oh, that Amy! <laughs> Tail soon spoke up, getting everyone's attention. Not to worry, everybody. I don't think there'll be a need to conduct a full scale search for these portals. Rainbow Dash turned to look at him and ask. Well, yeah, what makes you see that, Tails? Well, using a screwdriver to tighten the screw, the fox replied, Well, this ring that I'm making for spare parts that those bandits left behind, so make finding the portals easier. 
Since I didn't have my hand held on me when all this happened, I needed to start from scratch. Sark grinned. That might not be such a bad thing, Tails, considering how long it took out to work all the bugs while you're using it as an alien translator. Should be easier to isolate any working problem if you're only designed for that purpose. Tails smiled. Yeah, I guess that's true. He did look around and asked, Now where did I put that wrench? Twilight looked up to the side and noticed the tool the fox was looking for, next to a small table short distance away. She used her magic to grab it and held it up, asking, Is this it? Tails looked up and said, Yeah, that's the one! Twilight levitated over to him and, took, and he took it, saying, Thanks, Twilight! He then got used it to tighten something uh, on the device he was building. Here, Dad raised an eyebrow. Are you sure you can make something that can actually find these things for us? Sonic said, Just leave it to Tails. He might run into some difficulties every now and then, but when it comes to machines, he's the best person to turn to. After a moment of silence, everybody being quiet so he could work, Tails stood up, holding the red device that had two screens on it, and could close up. Okay, I think it's done. So it's time to start getting to ya. He walked over to the portal near the bookcase and held the device up, filling it with the buttons while the sensors on the back of the top screen start collecting data. The viewer asked, What are you doing, Tails? While still looking at his new device, Tails explained, In order for the radar to start looking for new portals, I need to gather some data on the ones we've seen already. Once I had that, I can actively start searching for new frequencies that might pop up. That's how we'll know when and where new portals appear. And he said, You're the best, Tails. So, how's it looking? Tails replied, Should take just a minute, Amy. A few seconds later, a series of numbers appeared on the screen in the following order. Eleven. Two. Four. Nineteen. Nine. Two. CLEVER! Absolutely clever! I applaud! Clap, clap! He pressed a few buttons on the device and I, Okay, I got the frequency! He then turned around to face everyone and said, I need to get the data for the portal in the library for reference. Can you guys wait here for a bit? Sonic replied, Sure, no problem, buddy. Tails nodded and decided to be polite. I exited the office through the double doors. Rainbow Dash turned to Sonic and asked, You sure that machine he made school work? Sonic agreed. Yeah. Sonic agreed. Yeah, I don't know all about this either. Sonic replied, It'll be fine. Tails always produces results. He did head for the door saying, I'm gonna go wait for him out front. Amy immediately said, Oh, wait for me, Sonic. So he then skipped out of the office after him. Twice spoke, I think I'll go join him. Everybody else agreed and followed two hedgehogs out. Everybody sitting down on or near the front of the steps once they were outside. Doing one of those poses, you know, that you would see some people doing when they sit out on the front steps or something. At a short rate, Tails came over one of the princes with his twin ninsakes spinning. The bottom of the screen and device in his right hand reading 06 2 3 1991. Again! Sonic waited to him. Hey, Tails, how did it go? Tails landed near every party and a great reply. Got the frequency you are starting to rain our Sonic. It's even better. I've already found one. Raymond Dash perked up asking, Really? Where? Looking down at the device real quick, Tails turned a point saying, According to the readings, there's a signal coming from a large area in that direction. Twice said, Three humble acres is in that direction. Might be where the signal's coming from. Sonic stood up and said, Well, you clearly know the way around, Twilight, so lead on. He then turned to the mayor and asked, What are you going to do, ma'am? The mayor replied, I'm not much of an invention myself. I'll tell it be much use to you all, but you'll be able to handle it yourselves, won't you? Rainbow Dash nodded, Yeah, no problem, mayor. You'll just be like I said before. The mayor replied, Thank good luck, my little ponies. Oh, and baby dragon and hedgehogs and fox too. Every pony nodded, and the spike climbed up on Twilight's back. Every unicorn, all the rainbow dashed and led the way out to Sweet Apple Lakers. As they walked, Tails kept an eye on the device, occasionally looking up to make sure he wasn't straying off the path. So I did look back at him and asked, How's it looking, Tails? The fox kit replied, We're definitely going in the right direction. The signal's getting stronger. Sonic nodded and turned back around, flying close behind Twilight and Rainbow Dash. Both mares soon came to a stop, Twilight announcing, We're here! 
Sonic and Amy looked around him while Tails looked up. They were standing a short distance away from the arts at the farm's entrance, which, like the rest of the farm, was completely white. Sonic whistled and asked, So, you got any friends on this farm? Rainbow Dance looked back at him and nodded. Uh-huh. Elmatech lives here with her little sister Apple Bloom, her big brother Big Magatoss, and Grace, yes. So he then turned to Tails and asked, So where's the portal located? Mm-hmm. Tails tried, I don't know. The signal's topped out. This only shows the general area the portal's in. Rainbow Dance flew up to him and asked, Well, if you could build something like that, why didn't you build something that could show us exactly where the portal is? Tails right away replied, I'm sorry, Rainbow Dance, but I only had bits and pieces to work with. Frankly, I'm amazed there was enough scrap left behind by those panics to make this. Twilight cut off Rainbow Dash before she could see anything more. Just let it go, Rainbow Dash. Twi- Tails' device let us out here. It's at least giving us something to work with. So he looked at Tails and asked, You sure that the portal's here, Tails? The two Tails Fox nodded. Absolutely, it's pointing somewhere here on the farm. Sonic said, Then let's go look for it. Compared to searching all of Ponyville, we should be able to sweep this whole farm from top to bottom in no time. Of course, being me. Spikes worked. Well, there's a good thing we're in a world that has no time, huh? Twy gave him a flat look and said, Let's just look for it. Everyone nodded and spread out over the farm. Spike hopped off Twilight's back to help too, despite being annoyed at the way Twilight looked down. Sonic called, Hey, I think I found it! Every point came running over to where he had called from finding him standing in front of the, lar- of the barn where all the parties on the farm were held. He headed back to the barn, when he found a pulsing hole in the back wall. Twilight smiled. Nice going, Sonic. <laughs> that was fast. Sonic right there. Hey, that's my game. Amy growled slightly at that. It got- no! No, 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 no! Fuck no! No, we're not doing this! Fuck you! Spike spoke. What were we waiting for? Let's get going! Amy cheered. Yay! We're gonna save the world together, Sonic. Sonic has deadly spoke. Actually, Amy, I was thinking you should stay here. I mean, we need someone to babysit Spike. Amy asked, Babysitter? Oh, right, because he's a baby dragon, I get. Spike complained. What? Where can I go? Well, Spike... You know how Trinket in Fox Machina is a tough old bear, but in reality, it's actually kind of useless because due to Ranger rules. And you know how Mamochan is useful five times out of ten. And you, you know how there are certain characters out there who make really good support characters, but are relatively useless, but somehow build up a fan base of people who think that they are more useful than they look. You're that character. You're that character that so many people want to go, he could be awesome if you give him a chance. And everybody else is just like, oh, give me a break. And then we're forced to be stuck with you for an episode just to show how good you are. You're that character. Someone take a look inside that portal. Tell me what you see. Raymond asked tried up in the portal, peered inside. Uh, mountains? She asked. Twilight came beside her and looked in as well. Snowcat mountains. Tails came over to himself. You see his device skin the portal while he looked. Yeah, those mountains have snow, all right. Probably a fair amount of ice, too, he guessed. Sign nine. Three for three. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't dragons similar to reptiles in some ways? Twilight spoke. I couldn't tell you. We ponies don't know much about dragons. At least, no pony in Ponyville knows about them, and the library has no information either. Glossy back at the portal, he mused. Still, considering that place is that, that portal showing, maybe... Spike asked, maybe what, Twilight? Twilight came over, the bottom of his device now reading 0202 and explained, I think what Twilight and Sonic are thinking is that if you're not cold-blooded like most reptiles, going to a place like that could be dangerous for you, Spike. You might not be able to handle the cold temperatures. Spike protested, But I've been outside during the winter before and I've been fine. Spike spoke, Twilight spoke, Spike, they get through winter here in Ponyville and Canterlot. They hide up in the mountains are two different things. 
It could be much, much colder at the top of the mountain. Spike opened his mouth, but twice Starley said, No but Spike, you're staying here. Spike looked down in disappointment. So, she so stopped to start an act of softly ahead. We're just looking out for you, Spike. So I was worried that something might happen to you, and I am too. We're just asking you to stay behind this one time. And besides... Look at the bright side, Spike. At least you're not a Kenny from a Toku. Socket said, Yeah, that's all it is. We're not taking any chances with the cold here. After this, as long as there aren't any real cold places, you can come with. Spike asked, Really? Socket nodded, Of course. Spike glanced down to back up and said, Well, okay, but only if you promise me that I'll come to come with and help you guys out in another one of these portals. Spike! Unless you grew up, you really can't help, okay? Y you really can't. I don't know why we need to bring you. Just sit back and help protect the homestead. It's okay. Sark replied, I promise. Spike shook his head. Not good enough. Do the promise. Sark stared down and before nodding. Then held his right hand and you... He used to make an accident as he said, Cross my heart, hope to die, stick a needle in my eye. So I rainbow dance of Spike all looked down a moment before Spike eagerly said, That's not the promise. Tails, as he slid his hand held to his two tails, asked, What are you talking about, Spike? What promise were you referring to? Twi Spike said, When I said do the promise, I meant do the pinky promise. Twice said, Spike, that's basically what he did. All he said was die in a needle instead of flying a cupcake. And he just nodded. Yeah, it's just about your difference. Don't get all your scales messed up over it. She then snuggled. <laughs> well, wow, those getting worked over in small deal tails nail. Spike crossed his arms and glanced down, muttering, I, don't get to, I still don't get to see why I'm getting stuck with a babysitter. Because, Spike, in terms of power, you are useless. <laughs> no matter how many times... Somebody tries to write you as this big, brawny, super powerful, dark, gritty, grumpy, badass of a character. You are still a support. You're not Robin. You are not Kid Flash. You are the trinket. You are the tuxedo mask. We are not here for you, Spike. We are here for the main six. They are the main characters. We do not care about you! Sonic said, Because we don't know if there's anything dangerous wandering around this white world. If anything happens, Amy will be able to protect you. Crash down one knee and whispered to him, Personally. I don't think I'll be able to retain my sanity as he comes with. As long as Twilight's okay with you staying here, and you know how to go, you know, go to Amy if you need help, you can do whatever you want, just so long as you don't make her angry. That's a big no-no. Amy asks, Why are you whispering, Sonic? Are you flatterizing me again? Because this is really getting annoying. The blue head saw quickly stood up and said, Just whispering so friendly if I so, baby. That's all. Twilight asks, Well, Spike... The baby dragon sighed. I guess I can't stop you guys from leaving me behind if you're worried about me. They pointed a claw up at Sonic and said, But you better keep your promise, you hear? Sonic smiled. No worries there, dude. And they turned around and said, Alright, let's get going so we can find our friends. Everyone nodded, and Tails, Rainbow Dads, and Twilight led through the portal, Sonic following behind them. As he led through the portal himself, Sonic heard Amy call, Don't worry, Sonic, I'll take good care of him. After the blue head saw disappeared through the portal, so he turned to Spike and said, Oh, God, they're not. Oh, oh, no, please, no. You know, there was a time where I would read this scene of Amy treating Spike like a baby and trying to mess with him and ask to play a game with him. With some satisfaction of mocking her. 
But in the past year, I have played Sonic Frontiers. Sat through my little brother describing to me Sonic the comic. Still don't like it, but... And... We went through my love of DO2 adventure games. And since then, I've come to realize just... How badly Amy got flanderized, not only... In the show, in the game, in the games, but with several different fanfic writers in in Sonic X. So now instead of getting pissed off about Amy doing her stick, I'm now getting more pissed off about authors deciding that Amy is a one-note character. I want less of the. Amy bringing out her mallet like she is Kaori on a bad day. I don't want more of the Amy from Sonic Adventure 1. You know, the Amy that actually showed she cares. I want more of the Amy that showed up in the Sonic Frontiers prequel comic. That, you know, was on equal grounds with Sonic and Friends. That, while she had a crust on Sonic, it wasn't her only defining feature. And while she got excited to beat up robots, she wasn't willing to go on a killing spree just because she got a little pissed off. Basically, I want the Amy that actually had a well-rounded personality versus what Sonic X did to her. Thank you. Sonic's shoes crunched into the soft snow as he landed. The hedgehog's dead gets straight up a moment later. Glancing around, he knows his tails, Twilight, and Rainbow Dash standing near one of the edges, looking down as he walked over to him. He heard Twilight say, Wow, this is amazing! This is a much better view than the dirty city we are in. Rainbow Dash nodded, You said it, Twilight! This isn't 20% better, it's 100% better! Tails looked back and said, Sonic! Sonic and I and waved back to him. Hey, Tails! Tails started to look back at the mountain as we were on. He said, This place looks familiar, too. All this ice and snow, it was, uh... Sonic replied, Feels that way, too. I still wonder what's going on, though. Twilight turned to him and said, Yeah, me too. Right now, I'd rather get to know how we're going to get down from here. Rainbow Dash looked off to the side, and pointed a hoof in the direction, saying, Maybe we could use those? Everyone looked to where she was playing and saw two snowboards and two sets of skis. Twilight asked, What are those doing here? Sonic walked over to one of the snowboards, which was yellow with a blue stripe, and said, Eh, doesn't matter. We can use them to get down from here. Rainbow Dash flew over to the other snowboard, which had a rainbow pattern on a bomb, and grinned, I'm all for that! Tails looked at Twilight and said, Guess we'll be using skis. Come on, let's put them on! Twilight walked up to behind the fox and put a hoof on his shoulder, causing him to stop and look back at her. She spoke, Uh, Tails, I don't really know how to ski. Tails just smiled at her. That's okay, Twilight, I'll help you. Twilight murmured, Uh, I don't know. Sonic, while placing his feet on the snowboard, said, Don't worry about Twilight. Tails is playing a skiing experience. Just stick close to him and you'll be falling. Tails giggled and turned back to Twilight. He said, Look, we probably don't need to ski down the whole time right here. We just need to get down from here. That we could probably just walk around like normal. Twilight hesitantly said, Well, okay. Rainbow called, Well, get raised yet, Twilight. We'll both lay it to your buff array. Twilight and Tails looked to see Sonic and the sign pigs just standing on their snowboards near the mountain edge. Tails turned to Twilight and said, Here, let me know you put the skis on. A minute later. Twilight slowly followed Tails over to Sonic and Rainbow Dash, using her pulse to support herself on her hind legs. Rainbow raised an eyebrow as Twilight came to a stop next to Tails, standing next to Sonic and asked, You okay, you okay Twilight? Delivered her unicorn universally said, I think so, Rainbow Dash. I'm just not used to standing on my back legs like this. I wonder how long it took to Pinkie Pie to learn to do this effortlessly. Sonic asked, Who is Pinkie Pie, anyway? 
Spike mentioned that name too. You see, Sonic actually has an excuse. Rainbow Dash nods a lot when reply. Sees a or a pink earth pony, otherwise known as Ponyfield's party pony. Not to mention the la element of laughter. Now come on, let's go. Not bothering to wait for a response, he left out the edge, beginning to snowboard down the slope. So I called, hey, you know what? I'm going to have to blow past you for making an early start. With that, he left out the edge, following inside Pegasus. Tails looked over at Twilight and said, guess it's our turn. Twilight looked down nervously, then looked back at the fox saying, I'm not sure I could do this, Tails. Tails replied, of course you can, Twilight. Skiing isn't so hard. It's a little easier to learn to balance on skis than it is on ice skates. At least, I think it is. Twice sighed, okay, how do I do this? Tails explained, making most as he spoke. The most important thing to remember is to keep your skis forward. You won't get anywhere if your legs are all over the place. If you want to keep the skis close together at all times, unless you're slowing down. When they're close together, you move forward. You separate or drag them across the ground, you slow down. Speed up, bend your knees. This will any step on the wind resistance. Turn left or right, tilt your body in that direction. You want to stop or fall over to need to get a good start. Use your pulse. That's the only time you should ever really use them. Did you get all that? Twilight nodded slowly. I think so. Tails nodded. Just try to do as I do. If anything goes wrong, just yell. Now let's catch up to Psych Rainbow Dash. Twilight nodded. They both used their pulse to push themselves off the edge. Both the landing on the slope a second layer. Ah! Twilight screamed as she landed and gravity suddenly pulled her down. She flailed for a second before managing to plant her poles to the ground and pull her skis back. You know, I think this would be funnier if Twilight just started skiing erratically and had a sudden realization as he was starting to get near the ground. Wait a minute, I could teleport. Tails came to a stop and looked back at the physically shaking unicorn. She was clutching the poles so hard, so you sure she was going to break the heads off. Just take a deep breath and calm down, Twilight. You need to remain rational if you want to learn how to ski properly. Just relax and let gravity run its course. Don't try to fight it. Twilight looked down for a moment, then looked back down the length of the slope. Slowly, she moved her legs so her skis pointed down the slope, and then also carefully pulled her poles out of the snow. She tensed up and started moving again. When fought back to earth, she applied the poles back at the ground. Teal's turned and started sliding as she got closer, staying just a little bit in front of her. As they went down, the fox occasionally cried to her posture and even pushed her once to keep her from crashing into a rock. But eventually, they began to get the hang of it. Hey, this is fun! Tail said, I know, right? Glad you're having fun. Look at that down the slope he had. Oh, looks like we're coming to the end. Better get ready, Twilight! The lover dear Mary looked down and worriedly asked, Ready for what? Tails replied, For what I hope will be a soft landing. Twilight looked forward again and saw what he meant. Instead of a flat surface at the end, there was a hole. Both Tails and Twilight screamed as he went over the edge, volleyed for several seconds before landing first, face first in a pile of snow.